Hello, and welcome to the third installment of our invoicing uh, videos. The first one we did was how to create an order confirmation. The second one was a button that was here before, which was create ship notice. And the third one is going to be create invoice. If you're a good supplier, you would do all three. Again, order confirmations and ship notices are not required, but they are preferred just because of the additional information that you're able to send your customer to cut down on communication in between ordering and invoicing. Um, and also, uh, if you are a services supplier, you would just do create order confirmation and then ship note or <laughs> order confirmation and create invoice. The last thing I want to mention, because I did uh, repeat this in the other videos, is you always want to make sure that the purchase order that you're invoicing is the correct, has the correct information listed on it, right? So it has the correct quantity, the correct subtotal, and the correct description, part numbers, whatever that whatever might apply to you. You want to make sure that everything is correctly stated before you begin. And if you need to have a change made, go ahead and request it by contacting the Santa Clara County email address listed on your purchase order before you begin. Well, we're going to go ahead. We're going to go ahead and click create invoice standard invoice. Once you do this, it opens up and you can see that it's referencing our purchase order. And if I scroll down to the very bottom, it has taken everything from the PO and flipped it to the invoice form for us. So we don't have to key anything in. So we're going to go ahead and start entering the required information. So you would enter in your invoice number. And I'm going to show you if there's any backdating, any backdating rules right here. So just so you know, um, if you try to backdate an invoice for more than one day, you will receive an error and it won't let you submit your invoice. So that is the maximum. So I'm just going to pick today's date. Uh, but I did want to show you guys that particular um, section. Scrolling down, we have tax. Tax is preferred at the line level. So if there's any tax, you're going to click line level tax. If you don't have any tax because you're a services supplier, go ahead and click remove and it'll remove the line altogether. I'm just going to click line level tax to push this down. We're also going to do line level shipping. So if you have that, that's the same selection you'll make here. One, one uh, helpful hint that I want to give on this section here, you do not need to fill any information out. So don't feel the need to fill out uh, any of this supplemental information. It's not necessary and it's not required by the customer. As well, this particular box, I think that what most suppliers assume is if they check this box, it applies to this information in this particular section but in reality this information only no action is required from the customer will apply to your entire invoice document so if you're thinking about this logically if you check this box you're making your um, invoice information only and no action is required which means that your invoice will go from being an actionable and payable document to a non-payable document. So I think that that is the logic behind why some suppliers check this box. They think it applies to the information that they fill out here, but in reality, this is applying to your entire invoice, so don't ever check this box because what will happen is your invoice will be received, but it won't route for payment, okay? Moving on down, one other thing I want to mention, we do have this add to header button. If for any reason you need to add an attachment, there is the ability to do that. You just click add to header, click add attachment. It's going to open up with a section like this. You're going to browse for your file and then just go ahead and click open and then click add attachment. And then as you can see here, it will actually add your document. If you need to make a change because you added the wrong one, just go ahead and click delete and then you can just reattach the correct one. Okay, moving down to the line item section down here. As you can see, we have our line item. If we needed to add shipping, we could. Let's just let's just say hypothetically I had shipping. I had $10 shipping and it's shipping today, so I'm going to pick today's date. And the one thing I want to tell you guys, let's just pretend for the sake of our training that we had multiple lines. A lot of the time what I see customers do or suppliers do is to go in and just put a quantity of zero, a unit price of zero, and then the subtotal zero. The problem is that the line is still on the invoice, so it's going to submit a line with a zero subtotal, and the system has checks to check for that, and it will actually trigger a rejection error. The way, if you, if you had multiple lines, the way to the way to invoice for um, a partial invoice if you needed to remove one of the lines is either to check the box and click delete to delete the line altogether or I think this is more user friendly and I'll show you why there is an include slider if I click this 
it will exclude the line. So what it's saying is this particular line that we see here in front of us will not be submitted and only all the lines with the little green slider turned on will be submitted. So you can go through your lines and just exclude all of the ones that you want to not invoice for and then you can submit your invoice. The nice thing about this is if you're working off of an invoice copy and you find that you accidentally uh, chose the wrong line item to eliminate, if you click the checkbox and click delete and you find that it's you deleted the wrong one, you actually have to exit your invoice and go back to the purchase order and start all over to bring the line item back. However, if you've used the exclude button, it's really simple. I'm going to just click the include button. It's going to come right back. And as you can see, we're right back in business. So I just think that this is a much more user friendly way to eliminate the lines if you're invoicing in case of errors. The other thing I want to show you is how to add tax. So if you needed to add tax at the line level, you're going to click this line item actions button after you've selected the line and click add tax. It's going to add a tax line for you. We have sales tax defaulted. If you needed to select a different type, go ahead and select the category and go ahead and select it. And then you can enter either the rate or the tax amount, whatever you're more comfortable with. If you know your rate, go ahead and enter it. Or if you're working off of an invoice copy and you know the exact dollar amount, let's just say it was, I don't know, 155 and 90 cents. Okay, you can do that. Again, if you don't have any tax, go ahead and click remove. So if I click update, it's going to update with my information, and that's a really low tax rate. I want to go live in that state. Um, but in any case, um, as you can see here, once you've completed everything, you can either click next at the top or at the bottom. The numbers, or excuse me, the buttons are available at both the top and the bottom. If I click next, it's going to give me a preview screen. I can see my subtotal, my tax, my shipping, if I had it right. And then making sure that my amount due is accurate. And once I've confirmed that, I'm going to click submit. I can print a hard copy or I can click exit and then it'll take me back to my purchase order. Now my purchase order has um, been invoiced. I'm going to go to my outbox to review the items there. And as I can see, my most recent document, because I have this uh, sorted on the date, is right here. So I've submitted it and it's in a queued and a sent status. If you ever have any questions about the status um, definitions, click the icon above to look at the definitions for both types and you can see what they mean. And then again, if you've ever set up your account for alerts to alert you when invoices change status, um, you will receive those emails as it moves from sent to approved and paid or possibly sent to rejected if there was an error. Um, and I went over that in my notifications video. So if you have any questions about how to set that up, go ahead and review it there and make your selections. But that is how you would submit an invoice on the Ariba network.